We're now joined on the Sports Mix by the head coach of the Musselman Appleman, Brian Thomas. Coach Thomas, your team goes down to Cabell Midland for a test against the undefeated Knights, unfortunately. It's a 42-14 to loss, but what were your takeaways from that game? Oh, we did some good things. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not one for um, moral victories or anything like that. You know, you lose, you lose. But, um, you know, I, I think at the same time, you know, I, I don't know if you watched the game – if 42 to 14 was really, um, you know, a true tale of, of you know, the game, uh, you know, it, it was tight for a while and we did some really good things, um, you know, didn't do things great. There were some things we did wrong, but at the same time, um, you know, proud of, proud of the effort that we gave, proud of the execution at some times in the game. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we still didn't get it done. Coach, it seemed like you guys were able to score early in the game. Like you said, it was pretty close early and then uh, get another score late. Um, I guess, how do you, I guess, build on what you were able to do in this game offensively uh, with the good start and a good finish can hopefully, uh, I guess, try to carry some momentum the rest of the year? Yeah, um, you know, it's good good to put points on the board. um, But at the same time, we also had two other possessions um, that we got stopped um, within, uh, within the red zone, one of the times was on the five yard line. So, you know, they had a goal line stand, um, on us. And then the other one, I think we were about the 15 yard line. So, you know, you, you got to convert those, you know, that could have potentially went from 14 to 28 points. Uh, and then, you know, then we, we threw a deep pass later and, and, and uh, dropped the touchdown. So, you know, we, we still left points hanging on the board a little bit. So, you know, that part's frustrating. Uh, but, you know, we were able to move the ball. Uh, you know, we were able to do some really good things, both in the pass game and the run game. Game. So, you know, looking to looking to build off that, looking to continue to get better. Uh, you know, I, t- I told the kids after Friday night, you know, even though this season is flying by, they all do. And even though, you know, before we know it, we're going to blink and the season's going to be over, we still got a month left. We still got four games left. So, you know, when you look at it like that, that's still – that's still a lot of time, um, you know, with, with, you know, a little under half of your season left. So, you know, we, we still got work to do and some things we got to get done. Coach Tommy, it's your team now, unfortunately, on a four game losing streak. And it might be tough because of the situation that you guys are in to find the positives out of it all. But what are some of the positives that you've seen in this four game stretch from your team? Yeah, you know, the two things. Um, that's a good question. There's two things. Um, you know, first off, sports, sports in itself, but especially coaching and playing, it, it's so much about relationships and it's so much about, um, you know, how you build those relationships with, you know, um, coaches and, you know, between coaches and players. I think that's a huge part of the deal. And, and you know, we, we're frustrated, but at the same time, um, you know, we're not, nobody's pointing fingers. Coaches aren't pointing fingers at players. Players aren't pointing fingers at coaches. Um, you know, those relationships that we have with our kids, um, are strong and we still believe in our kids and our, our kids still believe in us. So, um, you know, our, you know, that's a really good question you had about, you know, coming off four losses, kind of how's that team morale? Our team morale is really high. Um, and, you know, we're really positive about where we're at, you know, and, and, and to kind of the second part that I have to go along with that, like I said, I'm not about moral victories or anything like that. But, you know, you look at you look at the four games we lost and I don't know what the SSAC rankings are, but we lost to Morgantown, Spring Mills, Martinsburg and Cabell Midland. Well, let's let's go combine those records. Um, and like I said, I'm not about moral victories and, and I'm not about saying, oh, we played really tough. But at the same time, we lost to four really really good football teams that there's a lot of teams in the state. If you gave them those four games back to back, um, you know, it's, it's going to be tough to win those games. So we expect to win them, but at the same time, um, you know, it, it, it was a very difficult stretch. And now, you know, we got to stay together and build on that a little bit um, coming in here to, to these last four weeks. Coach, you re- or you mentioned to us last week that uh, you were going to go with the two quarterback system heading mm-hmm. into this last game has anybody separated themselves or do you think you're still going to keep uh, both Eli and Michael rotating well uh last game Michael played the whole game um yeah Michael took every snap um you know other than when we went to we went to some wildcat sets and we went to some different uh variations um 
you know, Michael played, Michael played a really, really good Friday night, uh, had a really good stat line. I think he threw for, I think he, I think off the top of my head, it was like 160. He threw for, uh, made some really good shit decisions and protected the ball. So, uh, you know, we, we continue to kind of evaluate, um, you know, everything within the program, um, you know, we'll, we'll go into practice this week and, you know, all, all our guys will get reps, but, you know, right now, um, you know, based off Friday night performance, you know, Mike, Mike played really well and Mike's, um, Mike's our guy right now. Let's look ahead to this week's game now. Coach Thomas, you guys will take on Hedgesville Saturday at 11 o'clock at Shepherd University. With the day and time change, does that kind of switch things up for how you guys are going to move forward this week? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, that's it's a different it's it's a different schedule. It's a different time. Um, so yeah, obviously, it kind of throws you throws you off kilter a little bit um you know at the same time it throws them off a little bit too so um that's not really an excuse but it, it, it is it is different from normal just because you got to think of everything um you know you got an extra day uh to kind of prepare and, and, and to rest a little bit and to practice and to put stuff in and um you know you're playing at a different time you know you're playing in the morning you're playing at a neutral venue uh so you know there's a lot of things that i guess if you wanted to make them excuses they could be excuses but you know ultimately at the end of the day we're going to be playing a conference team we're going to be playing on a football field so um you know there's there's you know football is football you got to show up and play at the end of the day no matter no matter where it's at so um you know we're not going to we're not going to use any of that stuff that could be excuses as an excuse. We're going to, we're going to show up and play. And coach, you mentioned the, the stretch that you guys went on and just came out of that four game stretch and it doesn't really get much easier. You still have three conference game and conference games in a Parkersburg team that has been pretty good this year. So uh, how do you get the guys to finish strong over these next four games? Um, knowing that you still have a lot of challenges on your schedule. Yeah, I mean the remaining the rem- I mean our remaining schedule is tough. I mean we got three straight conference games coming up, um, and our conference is as good as anybody um, in the state. And then after that, you got a Parkersburg team that um, you know they they've beaten some really good teams this year, uh, and they're a good program. So you know our our next four games are you know they're all tough. Um, but you know like I said earlier, we've uh, you know we 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 just faced. We just faced a uh, first-team All-State quarterback and a running back that's uh, got a full-ride commitment to WVU. So, you know, we, we've played some, some pretty good comp- stinking competition uh, here recently. So, you know, our kids are you know, our kids are going to be ready. Uh, we'll, you know, we're going to practice hard this week. We're going to prep them. Um, you know, um, our coaching staff is going to do a great job, um, you know, get, getting our boys ready to play. Um, and, you know, we're really all of these last four games, you know, we'll, we'll be ready to play and we'll, we'll be hard. You know, that's kind of what Muscleman football is based around. You're based on, um, you know, we're based on our effort and how we play. Um, and, you know, our, our kids, we expect our kids to come out and play really hard. Coach Thomas, what have you seen so far from Hedgesville on film and what's your team need to do to get the win against them? Yeah, Hedgesville's good. Um, you know, they're they're very aggressive. Uh, you know, they they get after the football uh, defensively. They fly around. Uh, they they have kids that are that seem to be in on every single play, um, and they're really good. You know, offensively they do some unique things, and that kind of presents problems just because. You know, first and foremost, when you see a team run some unique stuff, you got to make sure you line up correctly. If you don't line up correctly, um, then, you know, you're already out of position from the get-go. So, um, you know, they're really good. Uh, you know, we know they're going to be fired up and ready to play. This is a, you know, this is a, this is the longest running rivalry, uh, in our conference, uh, Muscleman versus Hedgesville. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, side note here, I think a lot of people don't know that because, um, you know, our area is so popular and so growing that, you know, people move in just assume that, you know, with all due respect to Martinsburg, you know, people assume that, hey, they've been, you know, they've been the best team in the state for the past 100 years straight. And that's not, you know, that's not really the case. So anybody that knows, you know, their history on Eastern Panhandle football, um, you know, know that 
uh, Musselman and Hedgeville. And it's, it's unique a little bit just because both of us schools, Musselman and Hedgeville, uh, were small schools. So, you know, you go back into the 70s and we were both small schools together and, and Musselman and Hedgeville both have kind of grown uh, into bigger schools within the state. So, you know, this is the longest running rivalry uh, in our county, um, you know, which, which is an exciting, you know, you like, you like to play those games. So, you know, they'll be excited. Uh, we'll be excited. You know, I expect it to be a really good game and a really good atmosphere. All right, Coach, before we let you go, after talking last week about your fantasy baseball team, you kind of inspired us to try to get with all the coaches and have some outside-the-box mm. questions for them because mm. you guys aren't mm. just coaches, you're people too. So this week, kind of just wanting to make it a one-themed-only thing because when we asked final thoughts to everybody, it wasn't always the same. So our last question is, what is your favorite meal? Oh, man, that's such a broad question. Such a broad question. Like my favorite food, like anybody that knows me knows I'm a Dairy Queen fanatic. So I, 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 I can eat some ice cream. Um, but I'd have to, I mean, that would be dessert. So I'd have to start off with like some pork bar. I mean, pork barbecue is probably my favorite food. Um, oh, man, that's tough. That's a tough question. See, I, I don't know if I can answer that just because, you know, then I got to go to the Chick fil A because I, I love Chick fil A. Um, you know, here in Inwood, Cider Press, I don't know if I can go with one. If I had to eat a meal, I would go pork barbecue with ice cream as dessert. Sounds good. Now I'm hungry, so appreciate the time, Coach. Yeah, same, 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 same. Yeah, I, I appreciate all you guys do. Thank you. Thank you.